everyone, welcome back. I'm at Frampton Marsh Nature Reserve today, which is part of the RSPB. Um, I'm actually here because I've just had an interview with the RSPB magazine, which is a, a monthly publication. So I've just had the interview and I thought this would be a good time to bring out another new lens. So this is the uh, Canon 300mm f4. I got this through the mpb.com website so it's not brand new but it's in really good excellent condition um, as I mentioned in my Q&A I was looking to get a fixed lens at some point in the future and it just turned out that this was available um, just while I was browsing around um, so yeah f4 I think it is the widest aperture I've got available in terms of my uh, Sigma I think that only goes up to uh, 5.6 um, so yeah, I've only got this with me, but my Sigma is in my car. I'm going to really challenge myself to just use a fixed lens and see if I can create any more improvements in terms of composition, working with the environment that's laid out in front of me. Um, so behind you is actually uh, the reed bed. And there's quite a lot of uh, geese and swans out today. It's a cluster of black-headed gulls. And I think I spotted um, so it's a great crested grebe with a chick and there's also a black-tailed godwit out on the water. So I'm going to do a little walk around. Again, I've just got this with me and I'm just going to see how I get on with it. It's obviously my first fixed lens uh, while doing wildlife photography, so it could be a hit or miss. But I'm quite happy that I've got this now as part of my collection. It's just something else I can go to if the Sigma is not quite what I'm looking for or wanting to use and yeah like I said it's a bit of a challenge because it is fixed and it will literally just photograph whatever's in front of me without adjusting the zoom at all. Um, I may come to crop it but again I, I want to see what qualities I can get out of this rather than just resorting to constantly zooming out <laughs> and getting as close as I can to the subject. It's quite nice for me to include the surroundings when, when there's either a bird subject or a mammal subject involved. I quite like uh, the surroundings being included rather than just singling out the, uh, the mammal or bird. Um, so yeah, I'm going to head round. Um, there's probably going to be some sedge warblers or reed warblers in the bushes as well. Um, so yeah, there's quite a nice breeze so I feel as though I can make the loop round without uh, getting too warm. And yeah, let's see how I get on. visitor centre entrance and there's, there's quite a lot of activity here there's obviously uh, different sorts of bumblebees uh, there's like a small looks like a butterfly yeah it looks like a I can't remember the name now it's one of the meadow butterflies um, and there was also a burnet moth uh, a five spot burnet moth um, so I think I'm gonna hang out around here for a bit and see if I can get any insect shots because again that's something I don't photograph a lot of and I think with something like this and with it having a macro so you can go as close as 1.5 meters on this and um, yeah it'll be worth seeing what it's like when photographing the smaller subjects rather than anything from a bird upwards so we'll see what we find. quite fun to uh, do composition work with these flowers and there's bees as well but they're uh, a bit too quick for me at the minute but because I'm obviously fixed I'm having to think a lot more about what I want to have in the frame uh, whether I need to move back or move forward a bit more um, if I want to include more birds in my shots um, so it's, it's a little bit challenging to, th to think about rather than like because I'm, when I'm using 150 to 600 I know I have the option to crop in when I edit but when it's just all fixed like this I know I can't do a lot of cropping because everything is quite central to the frame anyway and I'm quite close in I am working um, at f4 so this is the widest aperture so it's really bringing 
just like totally blowing up background and foreground and bring whatever I um, focus on like, into really good focus so that the quality on this is actually really nice. So there's a couple of these hanging around so I'm going to try and get pictures of them as well but um, it looks like at the minute it will be mostly uh, flowers which uh, is a little bit different subject to photograph than what I usually show you. Um, yeah, there's a nice bee at the minute I'm going to take pictures of, so I'll see you in a bit. levels are actually controlled here and this is in accordance with the breeding season so we obviously we enjoy having wading birds visit here uh, one of the most successful stories um, surrounding wading birds is that of the other set which is the RSBB logo and yeah the numbers have been ever increasing the last few years if not more so we as a part of the charity we highly encourage uh, wading birds coming to breed here, it's, it's vital for uh, their survival and to keep their population numbers up or at least stable. Um, so the water level is controlled in these uh, compartments just surrounding the visitor centre and this um, it deters uh, potential breeding birds like black-headed gulls. As a lot of you probably know we get plenty of them, um, especially near, well pretty much anywhere there's water. Uh, they come and breed here as well is we rise up the water levels so the black headed gulls are uh, deterred from making nests there because if the water levels rise um, then their nests will be unsuccessful. It's not so much as you deter them because there are plenty of other uh, compartments around the reserve where they can breed but what we like to see is where there's an awful lot of water that the wading birds would uh, prefer that area and breed there without being disturbed by the black headed gulls. So, yeah, just a little fact that I've learned while we're volunteering here. So I've been volunteering here since the middle of January 2019. Obviously the last couple of years, especially in 2020, I wasn't able to volunteer as much. I wasn't able to come down here of my own board. But it's a lovely place. It's local to me. There's so much here. It's not just to do with uh, wading birds. There's in the area we get marsh harriers here and it's yeah over the past decade it, it's probably one of the best RSPB reserves alongside that of Minsmere and Titchmarsh so yeah it's nice to know that this area is so close to me and a lot of people actually come across the whole of the UK just to visit Frampton so it, it's a wonderful place there's a variety of mammals as well as birds yeah, it's just a, a lovely place to just to come here. It's, it's wonderful. So I'm going to carry on up the path behind me and I'm probably going to end up leaping back round and I'll see if I can get any clearer shots of the more open expanse of water just so I haven't got so many beads in the way. And it sounds very quiet here. I heard one sedge warbler walking round. Um, so this is a lot of the small birds. Uh, 
keep walking. Rain just fit it in the screen, but um, this is actually a retired navigational marker which was used out on the wash. It has been uh, recycled into unique works of art uh, that showcase Boston's maritime connections and the heritage. So this was transported here from the Boston Borough Council and alongside Boston Big Local, Boston in Bloom Environmental Agency and the Arts Council uh, to create a trail of boys around Boston. So they've been donated to Frampton Marsh and painted by renowned street artist Nathan Murdoch. We also have, there's another one further down and there's one out towards the, with the mouth. But yeah, if I could just, I'll try and walk around it and show you the details. So we got lots of lovely bee orchids. Sunflowers, which we're planting this year, and raspberries. So, yeah, it's it's so big I can't fit it in screen. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a lovely landmark, and as I said, it pays homage to uh, the heritage around the Boston um, area and uh, the maritime history, basically, and for it to be part of Frampton Marsh and to display all of the different varieties of wildlife we get around here it's uh, yeah it's really nice really nice to look at. Just had a pair of reed bulletins flew from the reed bed behind you. Um, one went in the bush on my right and then one went in the grass just behind me um, but one of them I believe the male was sitting about midway up between reeds behind. Um, obviously the sun is directly behind so a lot of it is uh, backlit. Uh, I don't know what the quality will be like on that but that was quite, I quite enjoyed that shot because again I was incorporating the surroundings around the bird um, rather than just getting in as close as I can. Because a lot of the time I often think I like to get as close as possible um, either have a completely blurred out background or a bucket effect but when it's wildlife I feel as though it's quite important to include the surroundings as well just to give an idea of um, what habitat the birds reside in and yeah just to get just to get an idea of what the surroundings are like um, but yeah I think they've gone uh, completely um, I haven't heard any calling either um, so they might just be Again, hiding from the sun, it's a bit warm for them. But I've got uh, one more corner to go around and then it's pretty much uh, straight back towards the uh, visitor centre here at Frampton Marsh. So I've just found a bit of high ground. Uh, directly behind you is access to the 360 degree hide. And then further on my left hand side is the main bed hide. And there is also the east hide which is out towards the sea, which looks out onto uh, the salt marshes of the wash. There's a few big swans, and further out is the black headed gold. There's a corner in it amongst them as well. Um, so we've got a few black headed golds flying over, so I've been uh, doing my best to get to some influx shots. Um, the heat is definitely getting to me though, um, so I'm most likely going to do the last uh, corner round and call it there. Um, but I really enjoyed being out here. Normally, when I come here, it's just to do the volunteering. Um, but it's nice to just come out in my own time and yeah, just explore the area for myself and see what the bird life's around. So as I've already said, um, when a sea entered next F4, um, I really like it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's an overview of it. Um, the quality's really nice and like I said, it's been fun but challenging to um, composite my images. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do any other 
videos before then. It might just be that I have a spare few hours of the day and I go somewhere else. But um, yeah, it's looking most likely that I will have a roll. I'll do all of my recordings on there, do some B-roll and end up doing some narration and put some nice music over the top as well. Um, so if you don't hear from me uh, before then, then I will be seeing you. It'll be around next time. <laughs> um, I think I said this from the start because I'm working with my life. It's quite unpredictable as to whether I will get a good amount of content to show you. 